Senator Bernie Stan Sanders. He's an independent from Vermont, chairman of the Veterans Affairs Committee. Uh, good to have you on. As always, I want to talk to you about what this situation could mean, Senator, for your own political aspirations. But let's start with the specifics, Senator. We are at war, the country, the United States. In this area, there has been no debate, no vote or declaration of war. Do you believe that was a mistake? Well, I believe uh, that, that, that we need serious discussion in Congress, Chris. But I will tell you something else. Uh, I voted against that resolution a couple of mm -hmm. weeks ago because I do not want to see the United States get involved in another quagmire in the Middle East. I'm sitting here wondering where Saudi Arabia is, mm -hmm. where Kuwait is, where Qatar is. Saudi Arabia spends more money on defense than they're the fourth largest defense spender in the entire world, more than the United Kingdom, more than France. Mm -hmm. I want to see them get their hands dirty. I want to see them starting to use their air force in a significant way. I think we should be supportive. But this war will not be won by the United States alone. It will be won by people in the neighborhood, by Saudi Arabia, by Iran, and those countries prepared to take on ISIS. Well, why do you think they're so slow to action? Why do you think we saw a video on Friday of ISIS advancing and Turkish uh, military just watching well within shooting range? Well, you know why? Because I think they have full confidence that the people of the United States are going to do the dirty work for mm. them. And I'll be damned if kids in the state of Vermont or taxpayers in the state of Vermont have to defend the royal Saudi family, which is worth hundreds of billions of dollars and which, as I said a moment ago, has a major and significant air force and army. We should be supportive. But this is going to have to be a war won by the Muslim countries themselves taking on this dangerous and horrendous organization. It cannot be won, and it will not be won, by the United States alone. Does it mean that the United States and its allies have overstated how much appetite there is in the Arab world uh, to take on ISIS, how much appetite there is to fight for the soul of Islam? Well, that's the soul of Islam is what we're talking about. And I think the president and, Senate and Congressman, uh, Congressman, Secretary Kerry have done a good job trying to bring together these forces in the Middle East. But they're sitting around saying, hey, the American taxpayer will do it for us. The American soldier will do it for us. Not only is that wrong, in the long run, it's not going to win. But I'll tell you the other thing that concerns me. While we focus all of our attention on ISIS, the middle class of this country continues to collapse. We have more income and wealth inequality than any other major country on earth. Real unemployment is close to 12 percent. And you know what the people tell me in Vermont and around the country? Let's also start paying attention to the crises facing working families in America. Well, it's interesting. You know, the recent CNN ORC poll, Senator, echoes uh, what you're saying now that should be obvious to anybody watching the show, which is the economy wins over the ISIS concern about 65-35 in terms of what their concern is when they go to vote. However, everybody cares about this situation, and it's ironic that not only is Congress not coming up with plans on how to help the economy, but they're also not coming up with a plan for declaring war, and constitutionally, you're supposed to. Now you've got Pelosi asking Boehner to have a vote on it. Do you think a vote happens? Well, you'll have to ask Mr. Boehner about that. I don't know. But I'll tell you what I do want to vote on. I want to vote on raising the minimum wage. I want to vote on a massive jobs program, because real unemployment is 12 percent. Let's put millions of people back to work rebuilding our infrastructure. Here's my concern, Chris. The question is whether the media and whether the Congress can chew gum and walk at the same time, and whether we're going to continue to ignore the fact that the middle class of this country is in desperate shape. Ninety-five percent of all new income goes to the top one percent, massive wealth inequality. We've got to focus on those issues. Well, you, got, you know what my answer is going to be, you know, Senator. You guys do something about it, and we'll cover it. You know, listen to Speaker Boehner, though, on what your big concern is about not wanting kids from uh, Vermont to wind up having to fight this war. Boehner's singing a different tune. Listen to what the Speaker had to say. And if no one else will step up, you would recommend putting American boots on the ground? We have no choice. These are barbarians. They intend to kill us. And if we don't destroy them first, we're going to pay the price. George Stephanopoulos asking the obvious question. You now have the Speaker of the House giving an answer that, yes, he would have to commit U.S. troops. You guys won't even debate the issue, and he's already making a decision. Well, don't be you guys. Blah, 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 blah. You know, Chris, it's not you guys. You know, some of us are prepared to debate this issue. What Boehner is saying, basically, people should hear it carefully, is perpetual warfare in the Middle East 
billions and billions of dollars of American taxpayer money, the loss of lives, while the royal kingdom of Saudi Arabia laughs all the way to the bank with their oil money. So this senator does not agree with that. And maybe Mr. Boehner also, before he send, talks about sending American kids into the Middle East, might want to raise the minimum wage, might want to deal with pay equity, might want to ask his billionaire friends to start paying their fair share of taxes. Bernie Sanders, if you care so much about the American people and you want change, why don't you run for president? Are you afraid to take on Hillary Clinton? <laughs> well, as I don't think it's a question of fear. As you know, I have said that I'm giving thought to doing that. But if I do something, I like to do it well. I'm going around the country getting an assessment from the American people as to whether or not there would be support for a campaign that, in fact, takes on the Koch brothers, takes on the billionaire class. I haven't made that decision yet, Chris. You think Hillary can be beaten? Well, first of all, I think that uh, America is not into anointing anybody. I have a lot of respect for Hillary Clinton. Uh, she's a friend of mine. But I think in this country, we need a vigorous debate about why the people on top are doing so very well while everybody else has seen a decline in their standard of living. We need a debate about why we are the only major country on earth without a national health care program guaranteeing health care to all people. So there's a lot to discuss, and I think the American people uh, look forward to that type of debate. You're raising the right issues. I look forward to covering that kind of debate, and we'll see yeah. if you decide to actually get in there and throw some punches. Senator Sanders, thank you very much for joining us. Always good to have you on New Day. Thank you, Chris. All right, Michaela. All right, Chris, let's turn to Hong Kong.